for knowing this. What about the helium in the zircons? Because, you know, the argument is that there's, if the radioactive decay, radioisotope decay was happening over, you know, a billion years, then the helium would have already diffused because helium doesn't, you know, it's light and it, it should be out of the zircons, but there's, we find helium in there. So um, what what's the response to that? So um, the helium is being produced continually over time. Uh, it, every time, your every time, not just uranium-238 decays, but its daughter 234 and its daughter 230 and its daughter uh or sorry, thorium 230 and th sorry, thorium thorium 230 and its daughter uh radium 230 so it's like, like alpha decay has produced a lot in this decay chain so every time any of those isotopes decay it's making more helium and so what you're going to have and not just in this system but any system where you have some leakage maybe not any a lot of systems if you imagine you had like, uh, I don't know, a bathtub or something like a leaky bucket, the more water you have in there, the faster that leak's going to go because that's pressure, right? And so uh, there's eventually, if you're coming in at a constant rate, but the more you fill up, the faster it goes out, eventually you'll find a balance where the inside matches the outside. With a diffusion thing, you're going to have the same sort of thing. There's going to be uh, the more helium you get, the faster it will diffuse. And eventually those are going to even out. And then you'll just have the same about the same amount of helium forever until something changes it. So some so it might change over time as um, the zircon crystal is damaged by the alpha decay. And that might increase the rate of the diffusion, which would change the equilibrium level. But the point is, you're not going to have a case where the helium's ever all gone because it's being produced all the time and it's not diffusing away immediately. It's going to have some kind of equilibrium rate. Um, and so uh, I would not, I, I would be actually surprised if you never found helium and zircons because it's being produced. And as we believe time, that so. um, all these states that get millions and billions of years are due to accelerated radiometric decay, which has some powerful evidence in support of it. Like the, uh, decay of uh, uranium lead decay in zircon crystals that uh, Dr. Russ Humphreys has uh, yeah. has worked on. Solid, solid evidence, but yet skeptics always try to criticize it and knock it down some way, but Humphreys is pretty able to answer those challenges, which he has done in the creation science literature. I heard an old earth nuclear engineer recently because <clears throat> we did a talk on helium recently in zircon crystals. And yeah. so this old earth nuclear engineer, he said, well, because a byproduct of uranium to lead is always going to be, as, as you're moving through the chain, there's always going to be a little bit of helium. Yeah. Released uh, as a result. Helium atoms. So he, he, so he said, he said, I'd be surprised if we didn't find helium in, in the zircon crystals going back billions of years. And so he's basically almost sounds like he's agreeing with us, but he's saying, hey, we would expect it too. Mike, I'm curious no. what your response would be. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you, for every atom of uranium that changes to lead, uranium-238 to lead-206, you give off eight helium nuclei that grab electrons and become helium atoms that are uh, a noble gas. And so, yeah, it collects, but it leaks out mm -hmm. depending on the size of the zircon crystal. So you got to have the same size. I'm, I'm going like this, but these things are really like, like <laughs> that. Um, so there's a leak rate and they'll, they'll leak out. And so you'll always find a, some in there because it's always decaying, but but the fact that you have gobs of it in there indicates right. that it's not leaking very fast. And by the leak rate uh, out of the zircon crystal and the amount that's in there, you can you can, you have a dating method. And that comes out to around 6,000 years, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's a great response. So they're, it sounds like they're now trying to downplay it. 
they don't have any good rescue devices or responses. So now they have to say, well, I'd be surprised if there wasn't any helium. But as you pointed out, no, we find an abundance of helium. Yes. Not just a little bit as a byproduct. Yeah. But uh, so is the reason why we would conclude accelerated decay because, okay, it looks like there's been a lot of decay from uranium to lead, but wait a minute, we still find all of this helium, which should have dissipated into the atmosphere if the zircon crystals were billions of years old. So yes. there must have been a lot of decay, but quickly to, to retain that helium, basically. Exactly. And that can be answered by accelerated radiometric de decay within the past 6,000 years. Interesting. Very solid result that's, that's reinforced by uh, pleochoric halo research. Yeah, by that, the Snelling's research. You can find it all in the rate book, which is, I believe, online now. Yeah. And very detailed. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen any good responses. And with the C14 and diamonds you were just talking about, weren't those results from the rate? I, I think I remember Dr. Andrew Snelling speaking on this in a lecture. Weren't those validated by a couple secular scientists where they also looked at some diamonds and discovered the same thing? Yeah, it was uh, uh, Baumgartner was the first one to, to do it. And then a secular scientist have, have, have repeated it and found carbon-14 in, in diamonds. Mm. Yes, they have re repeated it. They've always found carbon-14 in coal. So we right. just essentially duplicated what they've, they've found. And they uh, they kind of consider that contamination. But I think when you find it in all coal samples, and when they take samples, they try to avoid contamination. In other words, they, they don't drill through a crack in the coal right. that uh, you would expect some contamination, you know. So it's a hollow uh, 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 hollow. I can't think of the right adjective. I think they took a ninth diamond, cut it into six equal fragments, and yielded radiocarbon ages from something like 69,000 to 70,500 years or something like just from one one diamond which is supposedly billions of years old. Yeah, I hadn't heard of that particular research. Well, I mean I those are all surprised. Yeah, those are all great lines of evidence, the helium and zircon crystals, C14 and diamonds and coal. These samples are supposed to be millions to billions of years old, billions uh for the diamonds.